I'm Anjali Bamani. Um, I, at this moment, I'm probably best known for being the voice of Symmetra in Overwatch. Uh, but I'm also an actress, television actress, theater actress, um, and I act around the world and sing and dance and do whatever they ask me to do that's legal. That's it's a common through line in yeah, female. Yeah, pretty much. You need me to kick my leg over my head? Sure, yeah, whatever you say. I'll do it. I'll do it. What's it been like moving from a very established career in television and in theatre to now be very well known for this uh, one role in Overwatch? You know, it's interesting because you, you often think as an actor there's going to be like the breakout thing and you don't ever know what that's going to be. And I'm actually kind of thrilled that this is the project that sort of blew up without my being ready for it too because as a kid, I loved gaming. I loved it. I played Dungeons and Dragons as a kid, and then I played all the RPGs on my PC and all of that because there's such a there's such a wonderment to it, and there's a creativity to it, and there's an inclusivity and um, and a way for people to interact with other people that you don't necessarily get uh, in other media. So I'm thrilled. Uh, it, it's it's not a shock or anything like that, and it's not like. Oh, why? I, I can't believe it's this thing. It's just like, oh, that's the thing. Awesome. Now I get to interact with these people. They're like my people, my gamer people. What was different about the way that you worked in performing for Overwatch that was different to other general acting roles you had in the past? Voice acting roles or acting roles in general? Acting roles in general. Well, the difference is, I mean, the obvious difference is you're only getting to use your voice, right? And um, while in the studio, I may be jumping up and down and doing all of the things to make it sound like I'm doing the things, ultimately, this is all that's conveying what we're trying to convey. And then the, uh, the masterful artists at Blizzard are making everything else happen. So um, that's been intriguing, trying to focus that rather than being able to use, you know, my body and my expression and all of that. Um, it's been really interesting having to focus that way. And then also the fact that in this particular game, um, we don't, when we're recording, we're recording on our own. You know, you're not actually having a scene with someone else. So um, the, the person that I'm acting with is our director, Andre Toyas, who's, um, who's in there telling me like, okay, this is what's happening in here and give me three takes of that. So it's a little bit, technically it's different. Um, but it's lovely. I love, I love voice acting because you really can be anything. I don't have to be a petite Indian female or, you know, I can be a dragon. I can be an elf. I can be whatever I want. You know, I can, I can change it up. I, don't, I can be a chair. Uh, so that's kind of exciting, creative, creative. This isn't the first time you've worked in video games. No, I did a role uh, in Fallout 4, Nisha, who is a psychopath. Um, and I loved her. Uh, uh, those are the two big ones. Yeah, those are the two main ones that I've done. But but it really did start recently, very recently. What was the difference between those two roles in particular? I think that what's so intriguing about a character is how their upbringing makes them who they are. And both Nisha and Symmetra have similarly troubled upbringings, but one went one way with it and one went the other way with it. So Nisha straight up went to the dark side. And so in that sense, there is a kind of um, I mean, like I said, she's kind of psychopathic. There's this kind of carefree attitude about killing because she's just developed such a dark view of the world. So as nonchalant as she might be, you also know she can kill you with your bare hands, her bare hands. And that, that is a really fun and powerful place to be. Um, and it's scary to be on the other side of it. To, be, to get, I mean, again, like in real life, that's not something that people would normally cast me as perhaps or would see me as walking down the street. Although they should, because I'm really dangerous. Um, but uh, that was very different because Symmetra, I think, has a has a deep, deep desire to create a better world. She has a deep desire to do good in the world, to have people not suffer the way that some people that she saw suffer when when she was growing up. And she wants to use all, everything in her capability to make things better, whether or not she is aligned with the right company to do that. Uh, that is what that is what her goal is. So her moral fiber is is strong, and that's how she's taken all of the. Um, obstacles that she grew up with and turned them into something good. Overwatch broadly has been championed for bringing diverse characters with varied representation to the table. Um, recently, Symmetra was... She was confirmed to be on the autism spectrum. Yes. Yes. Um, how has that been for you, interacting it's with been, fans? It's been fantastic. The thing is, uh, uh, early on there was a comic 
like very early, early days, there was a, a Symmetra comic that kind of gave you a bit of background, and it was alluded to in that comic that she may or may not be on the spectrum. So it wasn't something that came completely out of the blue. Um, what I do love about it, though, is that, again, like you said, because it's in such an inclusive game and there are representations of so many people of different abilities, this is a representation of someone, we don't see a lot of this in major media. You know, and for years and years and years, when people thought autism, they thought, okay, there's your average person and then there's Rain Man. You know, they didn't really think that there was this spectrum as, as there actually is, that there are tremendously high functioning people. And for people who I have spoken to, but people in my life who are dear friends and, uh, and some of the people from the Overwatch community, I hate to call them fans because it really is a community. Um, uh, I, I get this sense that it's done this beautiful job of representing someone with that particular condition as just another potential superpower. You know, Symmetra says in the comic, it used to bother me when people used to ask me where I was on the spectrum, but then it, now it doesn't because I can do things those people can't. And that is, that's where the sauce is. To be able to take your uniqueness for people who are living on the spectrum and say, okay, I have this particular set of challenges, but I also have this particular set of skills that other people don't have. What can I do with that? And that to me is exciting, for them to be able to see the hero in themselves because there's a hero like them. Have you heard stories from coming to shows like this or from the community online that have been particularly affecting? Yes, so many. And I cry like a baby. I am totally, I just, there isn't enough waterproof mascara in the world for how much these fans, these, these, these people in the community make me cry. Um, one that particularly struck me was I saw a post on Facebook where a woman was talking about babysitting for this young girl and she was sharing Overwatch with her and the young girl was of Indian descent and she saw Symmetra and she was like, oh my gosh, she's a Hindi girl, she's, she speaks Hindi, she's a Hindu girl? And she started, you know, I wanted to know everything about her and all of this stuff. And when I was a little girl, we didn't have that. You know, I had Wonder Woman, which was awesome. She was in love with her and obsessed with her. But just for, again, for little girls and little boys to see their hero, to have that moment of that's, that's me when I grow up, that's the power in me. Like, that just, it really is why you would do something like, like why, I mean, yeah, we do it for a job, but in a more fulfilling way, you do it because you want to inspire people. I mean, why else would we be telling stories for a living? We tell stories for a living so other people can experience things that they maybe can't experience for themselves. And so um, that, that always touches me. And just people who, many, many people who have written that, you know, I've been in a very dark time in my life, but then I found Overwatch and I found, some, I found friends and I found inclusion and I found relationships and now I have this thing that's kind of brought me out of that darkness. Like, what more can you ask for? Games have now taken on a role in media and in culture in, uh, of telling stories that matter. Um, what's left for games to take on? You know, like, what have you seen in the community that we should be paying attention to? Well, I just love the idea. The thing for me that's so intriguing about gaming and the way that technology has, has just erupted, you know, the things that they can do with games are mind-blowing. Now that we also are starting to have virtual reality and you genuinely can step into the game, um, I think, you know, as a storyteller, as a professional storyteller, to be able to make people be the protagonist of their story, you know, whether they are a villainous protagonist or not, that's up to them. But that interaction, that ability to get people to inside the action, I think that's the, that's the next place to be looking because it really gets people the opportunity to experience something they can't necessarily have in their normal lives. And Jolly, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you.